Over the past few weeks, we've been talking about promoting and marketing your book, and I've given you some really good stuff. Now, I know previously, this last week, I said we'd be talking about email newsletters, and unfortunately, we're gonna put a pin in that, we're gonna come to that next week. Uh, so this week, actually, we're gonna be talking about five ways you're promoting your book wrong. And uh, believe it or not, everybody's guilty of this at some point or another, so you're gonna to wanna to make sure you stay tuned to today's podcast. What's happening is Dale here, and I'm just tickled to death. You took a little bit of time out your day to spend a little bit of time with me to talk about something that is near and dear to my heart, which is self-publishing. Hey, today's podcast is sponsored by the fine folks over there at Author Brand Kits. For everyone who's asked me about websites for the last five years, there's finally a solution for the indie author community. It's for authors, by authors, Author Brand Kits. It's a one-stop shop for building your author brand for less than you'll pay to have a website designed for you. I know that can get really expensive. You want to save yourself 25% off for a limited time, you can go over and visit Author Brand Kits at dalelinks.com slash A-B-K. Again, that's dalelinks.com slash A-B-K for Author Brand Kits. So marketing and promotion is a, it's, it's a fickle beast. We all know we need to market and promote our stuff. Otherwise, you know, how are we gonna sell books? That's gonna be probably one of the things. There's a little foreshadowing with one of the five ways we're gonna be talking about how you're promoting your book wrong. But before we get to that, the thing is, we need to address the fact that you'll hear a lot of quote unquote experts or gurus. They're gonna spout out that, well, if you do my method, you'll get X, Y, and Z. Or someone else will say, well, that method doesn't work, but if you try this method, this will definitely work. You'll become a bestseller overnight. The fact of the matter is, folks, you gotta take every bit of information that you get for your self-publishing business, even, even mine, with a grain of salt. You gotta take it with a grain of salt because there's no one size fits all. There's no silver bullet that's gonna kill that werebear shapeshifter for you, all right? You want to be able to be successful in this business, though. You need to be flexible. Test out some different variations of some different promotional strategies. Be consistent with it. Then figure out what works for you. That's why I made this series so big. Was because I wanted to make sure everybody had a chance to kind of see a little bit of everything. So what works for me might not work for you. But I can say there's some things five specific things that are dead wrong. There's no way, way you can make it, shake it, or bake it any differently. So let's talk about those five ways you're promoting your book wrong. Easy for me to say. We're going to start that with number one. If you follow my podcast long enough, you already probably know this one. You've heard me say it in interviews before. And I'm going to say it again because it bears worth in repeating Publishing and praying is not a promotional strategy. If all you've done is put your manuscript together, you've got it formatted, maybe you've got a good book cover and you just hit publish, and then you just let it set there. That is publishing and praying. That is hoping that the Amazon algorithm will serve it up to people, or that Lulu will broadcast you out to their email newsletter, or Barnes & Noble will feature you on one of their bookshelves in their bookstores. Publishing and praying does not do anything. If you're content with zero sales, then publish and pray. If you're the type of person that you're just doing it for the sake of the art, that you just love writing and just putting it out there, great, that's fantastic. But if you come complaining to me, saying, I don't get any book sales, I don't know what's wrong. Well, what are you doing for promotion? Nothing. Uh, well, yeah. No amount of keywords are going to sell books, folks. Keywords make you more discoverable. And in some instances, you need to build relevancy. If you don't build relevancy, guess what? No algorithms are going to be able to serve up your book because it's not relevant. Therefore... You come back to the cold, hard truth that you got to promote your book. You can't just simply publish and pray for the best. Hate to say it. And maybe some of you folks out there are faith-based. Faith 
Maybe you are of the belief that if you pray enough that it will happen. That's fine. I'm not going to punch down on whatever belief that you have. But at the end of the day, you know what helps sell books? It's promoting, getting out there. There's no neon sign above your head saying that you're an author and that you get books to offer to the world. It's truth. Let's go to number two. This one's an easy, this is a gimme. I mean, anybody knows this, but I'm just going to go ahead and say, because I know there's a probably a small percentage of the listeners right now that will probably agree with this here. Spammy social media. Oh my gosh. Nope. No one wants to buy your book. Especially if you're going into 50,000 Facebook groups and link dropping your stuff. If you don't personalize, you don't put the social in social media, no one wants to buy your stuff. I don't care how many links that you drop in there. And the thing is, the more times that you become spammy, the more it puts distrust in what you are going to do in the future. Trust me. Okay, I did the spammy social media thing. I, I used to have hundreds of Facebook groups. And my belief was, well, you know what? If I hit 100 Facebook groups and I convert 10% of that, 10% of them, we'll say 10 out of 100 groups, maybe I get one sale per that. So we'll say I got 10 people to buy it. But then there's the other 90 people that saw this like, oh, this guy, oh, his book again? Great. I'm going to buy it. Not really. So you just got to take the time. If you're going to leverage social media, do it in a way that's meaningful. Connect with people in a real, true fashion. Treat it like a conversation at a party. You're not just going to go into the party, open the door, and scream into the room as everybody's dancing, drinking punch, having a great time. Hey, I'm the greatest thing since sliced bread. You should buy my book. No, no, no. Because you'll hear that proverbial record scratch. Someone's going to spill a little punch on their, their tuxedo because someone's wearing a tuxedo at a casual party. I don't know. Just go with me on this one. And they're all going to look at you and go, the heck is this person's problem? You got to treat social media in a way that it's almost like a in real life party that you're coming together with other people and conversing with them. And when you get weird, people are going to go, Ooh, let's avoid this guy. Let's, let's, let's bring our casual conversation over here. We're not going to loop that dude in because he's been pushing his self help, how to grow your toenails over the next 30 days with uh, supplements, whatever it might be. So don't be spammy. Take your time. Get to know people. That way, when you get ready to launch a book or promote a book, like it's going to be so much easier because then someone's already gone, you know what? I like this guy. His book's a little weird. How to grow your toenails over the next 30 days with supplements. Okay, but you know what? He's super cool. Like he's been nothing but a gem. I would be happy and honored to help him promote this. Number three of the five ways you're promoting your book wrong. Shotgun promos. Okay, so back in the day, back in the day, there used to be this whole belief. And, and hey, look, to a certain extent, it's, this strategy still works. It's what I usually call hot shotting. Hot shotting is when you launch a book maybe at a promotional price. And then you just hit every promotional avenue you can. Your email newsletter, social media, friends and family. Maybe you get a couple website promos. Maybe you do Amazon advertising. You just load this up and then it bolsters everything. But the problem is with shotgun promotional strategies is, first of all, A, if you've never promoted in any one given avenue, how do you know which way works best? Let me go ahead and just break this down. If you are, for instance, a person that wants to work out for the first time. First time ever. Maybe you need to lose a little bit of weight. You're, you're ready to just devote yourself all in for this. You go get yourself a gym membership, you buy a bunch of supplements, you clear out all the bad foods, and you get in some good foods, and you're ready to go gung-ho. Now that's good. That's all well and good. But the person that kind of focuses on being the tortoise versus the hare 
is inevitably going to be the person who wins in the end where they're changing a little bit of their lifestyle one piece at a time because then they'll be able to see what works best for them, how they can adapt to that that works best for them, find out what doesn't work for them and stop doing it. It's kind of like trying to go over. You're like, hey, I want to go ahead and lose weight. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to stack this supplement. I'm going to do A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Well, which supplement's working if you start losing your weight or you start putting on some muscle? You don't know because you're already taking four or five different supplements. The same works for promos. So if you're new to this, shotgunning your promos is not a good idea. Do one at a time. In fact, even if you are not new, I would recommend you spread out your promos, especially when it comes to anything you're publishing on the Amazon platform. Because if you're trying to appease the algorithmic gods, you're going to need to make sure that it has proof of concept, not just in being trendy, but consistent. They, don't get me wrong, they love to see a boost of sales, but the problem is they think it's just a trend. The algorithms believe, well, this is just a one-off type thing. It had a good day. Beyond that though, meh. They'd rather see, oh, this person's doing a dozen sales per day over the last couple of months. This is a proven seller. We're going to push it. As opposed to the person who had 300 sales in one day. And they're kind of like, well, we'll push this a little bit. And after a week, they're like, eh, they're not really pulling 300 sales in per day anymore. So, meh. So take your promotional strategy. Spread it out. You do newsletter swaps. Make sure you put a newsletter swap on a single day. Okay, you're going to do one on Monday. You'll do another on Tuesday. You'll do another one on Wednesday. And let's say you've got some paid strategies. You're going to say, I don't know, uh, we'll say Bargain Booksy. Maybe you're going to Read Z Discovery. Maybe you're going over to uh, Book Doggy. You'll separate those out onto different days. So that way, it's spread out and the algorithmic gods are like, ooh, well, what is this? I like this. And they're going to enjoy that. Number four, throwing money at a problem. And when I mean throwing money at a problem, I specifically mean wastefully spending on ads. I ran into somebody, I coached him and, and bless him, he was a super swell guy. And I'm sure he doesn't think that I'm talking down about him or anything else like that because we both had a laugh ourselves. But he shared with me he had done Amazon advertising to no avail. I was like, let's go ahead and take a look at your dashboard. We get behind the dashboard. This gentleman had his ads have been set at $1,000 per day. And his average cost per click, I do not kid you, $1. And he had his campaigns loaded with these. So he's getting clicks like crazy. The problem was... They're the wrong keywords. They were irrelevant. He was bidding way too high. He had a budget that was burning through things. After three days, he had racked up over $3,000 in ad spend. He probably got maybe, maybe like six sales. Yeah, that's scary. $3,000 to sell six books. He was throwing money at the problem. Don't throw money at the problem. First of all, if you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. Find somebody who does know what they're doing and try to learn from them. Now I know you might be saying, oh, this is Dale's way of trying to sell me some coaching programs. No, no, not at all. Not at all. But there are some viable solutions out there. Tons of YouTube channels, podcasts, Facebook groups that you can work with and kind of learn the system of, say, Amazon advertising or BookBub ads. Heck, you can get practically BookBub ad information free through David Gogren. He's got a great blog post, by the way. I've been binge reading it a lot lately. But there's so much you can learn. But I would say learn the whole process. Start spending low. Spend low, like absurdly low, almost like you're embarrassed to share how low it is. Because you need to figure out a couple of things. First of all, if I send traffic to my book 
and it's not converting to a sale. There's something going wrong. Now, we'll first of all say, A, maybe I'm targeting the wrong people. Maybe I've got the wrong keywords or products or categories. Maybe I've used the wrong service altogether. You know, because if I'm going to a romance site and I'm doing sci-fi, you know, horror books, then it's probably going to be a disconnect there. All those things aside, when a book's not converting, when people are going and you're sending the traffic there and they're not buying this, there's a clear problem that you got a bad cover. Now, I'm not saying that it's horrible or anything else like that. Maybe you got a great looking cover, but it might not be appropriate to your niche. Or it's just horrible looking. And I'm sorry, if your, your cover is bowling shoe ugly, hey, nobody going to buy it. Even your mom's just shamed to put it on her coffee table. You got to get real on that one. No amount of ugly cover, no amount of promoting is going to solve an ugly cover. All right, you're gonna have to get a good book cover and you have to invest in this. The next thing is bad ad copy. And I'm talking about the book description more specifically. If you can't give the viewing or the browsing customer a reason to purchase your book, a compelling and enticing reason to do that, because you're not just asking them to part ways with their hard earned money, you're also asking them to read your book and spend time doing so. There is where you need to tell them something that is going to say, you know what? This book is awesome. You got to go buy it. I mean, the cover's pretty cool, but wait till you see what's inside. That's the thing. I cover a little bit of this, and I just launched as of today. This is going to, of course, be a podcast that's airing you know, next week after the, the fact, uh, where I worked with a horror author who was having some real marketing and promotion issues. Marketing from a standpoint of, his packaging was off and some of his approach was off when it came to promoting. So we had to tweak some of those ideas and I actually covered in the pilot episode of what we're calling the show Book Rescue. Take a look over at dalelinks.com slash book rescue to see what we did to drastically increase his book sales. And part of that reason he wasn't selling books was book covers, book descriptions. Those two things weren't locked in. But I'll be darned, as soon as we started to get that in the right position, he started getting more sales. It was the darndest thing. I got one final mistake I'm going to share with you, and this actually is going to be somewhat a surprise when you hear me say this, but it shouldn't be too shocking. You're going to go, oh, that makes sense. Special thanks to our sponsors, Author Brand Kits. Check out Author Brand Kits when you go over and visit dailylinks.com slash abk. They take care of everything for you. Your websites, email, social media, and so much more. It's all turnkey. All you got to do is head on over to their link at dailylinks.com slash abk. I've got a link to that inside the show notes. Make sure you go ahead and click on that and help out those sponsors that help sponsor the show. So the final mistake here, folks. This is the biggest one I see. And where I've got one finger pointed forward, I got three pointed right back at me. Because I'm just as guilty when you stop promoting. If you want to stop seeing sales, stop promoting your book. Stop talking about it. You have got to be the biggest ambassador of your book. Because nobody else is going to be invested in it more than you. Promoting is an ongoing, never-ending process. Let me give you a great example. My last fitness publication was in late 2016. With the exception of some translated editions that came out in 2017, it was literally radio silence from Dale L. Roberts. It was mainly focused on doing videos over on YouTube. And though I dabbled on a few pen names and things like that in between the time the name Dale L. Roberts as a fitness brand started to die off. 2018 wasn't a good year. 2019 was even worse in 2020. Let's not even talk about it. Why? I stopped promoting. I stopped pushing this and being the biggest ambassador of my work. So you imagine that I was on just the biggest, the biggest uphill battle. And when I finally got to the top of the hill, I just rested. I stopped doing things. So you know what ended up happening? Sales dropped, relevance dropped for each of those titles, they're gone. Now, 
I'm not saying this for you to go over and buy my fitness books. Please, you can go there if you want and buy them. But honestly, that was a brand that I feel like I'm distancing myself from, and I'm more focused on talking about self-publishing these days. But I'm using it to illustrate a point that when you stop promoting, that's going to be the day that you're going to stop getting sales and stop being relevant. Hey, I talk a lot about this. If you uh, go on over, grab a copy of the award finalist and nominee of the promotional strategies for books at dailinks.com slash ASP. Again, that's dailinks.com slash ASP. You can pick up a copy of promotional strategies for books today. Next week, for sure, folks, I told you we'd put a pin in it. We're gonna be promoting, gonna be talking about promoting your book with an email newsletter, and we'll be wrapping up the entire marketing promotional series. In the meantime, subscribe or follow me on your preferred podcast platform and leave a review. I saw a few reviews. We're going a little long today. I thought it was going to be short, but we'll go ahead and see about trying to cover those in next week if we can. Uh, but thank you so much for all of you that have supported. And if you're watching this on YouTube, by the way, drop me a comment. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, tell me some of the ways you've seen people promoting books wrong or the ways that you've done wrong. Uh, if you agree or disagree, definitely would love to hear from you. If you're not watching me on YouTube, go over to dailylinks.com slash YouTube podcast and subscribe today. Be a part of the first 1,000 subscribers over on the YouTube channel there. In the meantime, folks, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will catch you next week.